Ever since forming a coalition in 2010, the Liberal Democrats have been chasing that high. A cataclysmic result in 2015 became the new norm over the next six years. The Lib Dems won 11 MPs at the last election, hardly something to shout about, but optimism has been growing. The Chesham and Amersham by-election was a remarkable victory and secured the party their 12th MP. But was it the start of a new golden age or simply a bright spark in a shadow of stagnation? To go through this, we've brought together three experts and commentators to score the Lib Dems and rate how well the party is doing in an array of areas. So first, let's introduce our guests. Hello, my name is Ian Dunt and I'm a political commentator. Karen Lindsay, editor of Liberal Democrat Voice. Hi, I'm Naomi Smith and I am the Chief Executive of the Pro-Internationalism Group Festival for Britain. And without further ado, let's see how our guests got on. Okay, so I think a good place to start would be, how do you think Ed Davey has performed um, as leader of the Lib Dems? He is pretty much invisible. It's hard to come up with a coherent idea of what he stands for. As a selection, you're taking someone from the coalition years, which is, you know, uh, argue it's the Achilles heel. Now it's more than an Achilles heel because they have so many weaknesses, but it's a real sort of sore point for the Lib Dems. Ed is probably not somebody whose name rolls off the tongue when you're doing word association with the word charisma. I think given that Tories and Libra have massive parliamentary staff um, and, and office staff. The fact that we're actually, that he's actually able to get there in the news on things like um, uh, coronavirus, vaccine passports, uh, changes of regulations, the way the government's performed, you know, civil liberties. I think that's, you know, I, I think it's really good. He is um, obviously a very kind and caring individual and he's made a huge amount of noise about wanting carers in Britain to get a better deal. You do have to kind of eat your words after that by-election and just think, you know, these guys are doing something right. So on that basis, uh, with caveats, by the way, there's problems with what they've done and there's a limitation to how, how well they can replicate that, especially at a general election. But with reservations at the moment, you probably would give him six out of ten. I'm being generous, I think. I was tempted for a five, but I'm going to go for six. Yeah, I've just remembered that. <laughs> You're a very six out of ten. <laughs> oh no, oh no, you make me sound so meat and potatoes. The next one is how electable do you think they are? You know, what, yeah, how, yeah, how, what are their chances of kind of getting a 2010 or, or a 2019? Um, polling at the moment is putting Lib Dems anywhere between about five, six percent, and a couple of polls this week have been uh, on 10 percent. Uh, I am aware that this video is probably being uh, recorded a little bit before it goes out, so who knows where they're going to be by mid August. Um, but I think on that basis, uh, they are not looking likely uh, to pick up many more seats as, as things currently stand at the moment. You saw from Chesham and Amersham, I mean, nobody, nobody expected us to win that in the run up. But we've shown that we can bring it where it really matters. And we know from, we got a lot of intelligence from that kind of campaign of really what, what was on voters' minds. They really don't like Boris Johnson. They really don't like things like, you know, um, the international development. I mean, soft, soft conservatives do not like the international uh, aid cut. Um, so, you know, I think that uh, we have got quite a good chance of winning in quite a lot of Tory seats, uh, particularly. I mean, if, if we're saying that they're at, I don't know, let's be generous and say 8% in the polls, then <laughs> their score out 10. <laughs> What's that? What would... Is 0.8. <laughs> 0 .8. 0 .8. Is that what we're giving them? <laughs> How well do you think the Lib Dems have set out a vision of what they want the country to be? Not particularly well, I think. Um, I think that people were, were very good at setting out a kind of retail list of policies. We're not brilliant about putting together the vision that surrounds it. And actually, we have a loads of good stuff to say. I mean, we are pretty much an, an insurgent, anti-establishment, planet-saving, um, freedom-loving um, party that really values as individuals we don't see people as some great big blob that uh, one size fits all we, we look at how we can do the best for every single person 
probably about a five. I think we can a do five. a lot better. Right, so this next one's a bit, you know, the, the next two are, I'd say, a bit more silly. So, um, firstly, we've got, um, how much excitement do you think that the party's bringing? How much excitement do you think there is? I'm not a big fan of excitement in politics, to be fair. So, I would rate it low, but I don't think that's a, a bad thing. I mean, the last five years, six years have been very exciting in politics, and that has not been a pretty spectacle to live through. I, I want politics to be quite boring. Boring is generally a function of a successful country, boring politics. Um, so they're not very exciting. You know, I'm going to give them a, I'll give them like a three out of 10 for that, but I don't, I don't really want that to drag the score down. What I'm suggesting here is that your numerical system is not providing the outcomes that I wish. <laughs> well, no, no, okay, wait, wait. Look, this is all being made up on the fly. Um, we can... <laughs> oh, what, you have a lot of deep thought into how you structure the <laughs> astonish? I will, have, I will have you know, I spent 30 minutes before <laughs> I'll give them seven out of 10 for excitement on the basis that I consider excitement a bad thing and I am therefore gonna score them highly on the basis of their lack of it. Again, I think you might have a similar kind of view of like, this is not necessarily what we want from our politicians. But it comes up so much with the electorate that I think it is kind of something that, whether or not, we, uh, you know, we as sort of experts agree with it. Um, what is their kind of, what I'm going to call pubability? You know, the, would I go and sit in the pub with you? Are you a, a, someone that I feel like I can approach? Those awful publicity stunts that MPs do where they're down the pub, pulling a pint, are just always cringe. Uh, and I think we can probably all recall really sort of toe curling images of people like Michael Gove or Cameron or Clegg or Vince Gable or people like that, you know, in pubs looking like, oh, I'm a normal bloke. I, I go to the pub and drink a, uh, an, an ale. But anyone that wants to have a pint with any politician needs to have their head examined. Yeah, sure. I definitely go and have a drink with Ed and uh, and and tell him why he needs to understand that his party's fortunes historically have risen and fallen in concert with the Labour Party, and that he really needs to make good on his promises. Have you ever seen the Liberal Democrats at a conference? We are very sociable animals, um, and you know, I think if I had to choose one, I think it would be Wendy Chamberlain, just because of the fact that. I haven't caught up with her enough and she lives literally across the Firth of Forth from me and we hardly ever get to see each other. I'm sure most people would, would be pretty comfortable to go down the pub with a Lib Dem MP because, you know, they're probably just going to sit on the fence on most issues, right? <laughs> yeah, they're not going to come out with something really nice. <laughs> <gross. laughs> probably not going to start a pub brawl, right? So yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's, let's, let's give him an eight. Eight out of ten. That's his highest score, the highest score they've got. Your overall score is a 7.3. I think that's pretty good. That's a t it's, well, I say it's an eight. Yeah, yeah, that's um, an eight with room for improvement because you never want to be thinking you've got it. You've got to be working and fighting all the time. I think that's vaguely respectable. It's a 5.8. You know what? That sounds actually really fair to me. That's actually where I'd quite like to end up. I think that accurately represents the way I feel about them right now. You've averaged a 4.36. They don't even hold their deposit. <laughs> well, it's quite well, unless that's 43%, in which case they've stormed the election. <laughs> the Lib Dems didn't pass Naomi's examination, but overall should be pretty happy with a solid two out of three. So do you think we could be seeing a yellow wave sweep the nation at the next election? We'll have to wait and see.